Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your bro here, hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys all about J sliders in Java. And at the end of this video, we're going to create a project where we can use a slider to adjust the temperature. So let's get into it. Before you reach the end of this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that we together can challenge and defeat the mighty YouTube algorithm. All right, everyone. So a J slider is a GUI component that lets the user enter a value by using an adjustable sliding knob on a track. So to best demonstrate this, let's create another class to keep things organized. So go to your source folder, go to file, new, class, and let's call this class slider demo. Click finish. And then we're gonna go back to our main class and create an instance of this slider demo class. So we're going to type slider demo and we'll call this slider demo with a lowercase s equals new slider demo parentheses semicolon so let's head to that class and start working here so we're going to need a few things to import so make sure you have these three imports java.awt.asterisk javax.swing.asterisk and javax.swing.event.asterisk now with this class we're going to implement the change listener interface so next to our class definition, we're going to type implements change listener. So then with our slider, we can actually update something whenever we make a change. Now we're going to add an unimplemented method and it's going to be state changed, but we're going to save that for the very end. First, let's work on our constructor for this slider demo class. So we'll just copy this and paste it, add a set of parentheses and a set of curly braces. Now what we'll do is actually declare a few global objects here. So the first thing is that we'll want a frame. So J frame, and we'll call this frame. And that's it for now. We'll actually instantiate these within the constructor. We're also going to want a J panel. So J panel, and we'll call this panel. We'll need a label. So J label, label. And lastly, a slider, which is the I guess the uh, main piece of this lesson. So to do that, you need to declare a J slider, J slider, and we'll call this slider. All right, now going within our constructor here, we're going to instantiate these objects. So the first thing that we'll create is our frame. So frame equals new J frame, and let's set the text to slider, let's spell it right, slider demo. And then we will want to instantiate our panel because we're going to add the panel to the frame. So panel equals new J panel. We'll instantiate our label. So label equals new J label. And then lastly, our slider. So slider equals new J slider parentheses semicolon. Okay. Now with the slider, there's a few values that we can add. So with sliders, we can have a spectrum of ranges and then we can have the user adjust a knob and then they can enter in a value that way. So the first set of values is the minimum and the maximum set of numbers for our slider. So let's say that we want somebody to adjust a knob on a track between the numbers zero and 100. So what we'll do for the first number, the minimum is enter in zero and then separate it with a comma, then you can enter in the maximum number. So let's say 100. So maybe we're finding the temperature of maybe water between the temperature of zero and 100 degrees Celsius. So we're going to set a minimum of zero and a max of 100. And now there's a third value we can add. This is the starting point for the slider. Let's say we want this to start in the middle. Well, we could say 50 for the starting point. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's add everything to the frame. So first we'll add the slider to the panel and later we're going to add the panel to the frame. So we'll start with panel.add slider. And we're also going to add the label to the panel. So panel.add label and then frame.add panel. And then let's set the size for our frame. So frame.set size and I like to pick 420 by 420. And then we need to set the 
frame to be visible. So frame dot set visible true. All right, so first let's work on our slider then. So let's set the preferred size for this slider. So we type in the name of the slider dot, and then we're going to use the set preferred size method. And we're going to type in new dimension and we're going to give a width and a height. So 400 is a decent height, I mean width. Uh, so 400 for the width and 200 for the height is pretty decent, I would say. Let's actually see what we have so far. Okay, yeah, here's our slider then. So it's just a bar that's adjustable. There's no markings or anything, so we need to add that later. All right, now what we're going to do is add paint ticks. So slider dot set paint ticks and within parentheses we're going to place the word true so let's see what this looks like now all right so we also need to add the tick spacing so these are little i want to say notches that kind of give you an idea of the range of numbers so what we'll type in here is slider dot set minor tick spacing so how often do you want a notch in this slider let's say every 10 units every uh, 10 of whatever you're counting by and in our case it's degrees Celsius so let's try it now so these aren't numbered yet but you can see about every 10 we should have at least like 10 ranges starting at 0 then they go all the way up to 100 and there's a little like notch here now we're going to set some major tick spacing so that comes next so I'm just going to copy this and we're going to change a few things so set paint track and we want this to be true and the next thing is set major tick space and let's set this to 25 okay now after each 25 units there's a larger tick these are major ticks and the small ones are minor ticks then and now with the slider we can actually add values to each of these major ticks and let me show you how to do that so i'll add that maybe right here so what we're going to type is slider dot set paint labels and we're going to set this to true now we have our uh, numbers for each of our major ticks but not the minor ticks and it gives our whole range between 0 and 100 and you can see that when we started this program, it begun like right in the middle at 50 because we set this value, this argument, the third one to 50. The first one is the minimum, which is zero. And the second value is the maximum, which is 100. So if you adjusted these numbers, it would also adjust the numbers on our slider. Let's also change the font on here too. So maybe I'll do that next. So slider dot set font, new font. I really cannot spell today. And maybe I'll give this a font of MV Bully because that's one of my favorite fonts. And then font.plane. We don't need to do any styling. And I will pick a font size of 15. And let's see what this looks like now. Not too bad. Not too bad. Looks more modern, I would say. So one trick you can do with this slider bar is that by default, this is horizontal. So we could actually change this to a vertical slider bar, and that kind of resembles a thermometer since we're taking the temperature. So in order to change that to vertical then, type the name of the slider, dot, set, orientation. And then within here, we're going to type swing constants, and then dot, vertical. And let's take a look. Yeah, I would say that would fit a thermometer of sorts. Then if you want to change it back, it's going to be the same process, but change vertical to horizontal. And this is what we had previously, but I think for this demonstration, I'm going to keep it as vertical, but I'll just turn this into a comment just so you have it for your notes. All right, let's add a label. So we'll have a label underneath that will display the current temperature, whatever this is set to. 
So let's add that right underneath our slider, but before we add everything to our panel and our frame, now to set the text for the label, type in the name of the label, and we're going to use the set text function, and then we're going to change the text. So I'm going to insert the degree symbol. I actually don't know how to do this normally, so I copied it from Google. Uh, then degrees C equals, and then if we want to retrieve what the current value of the slider is set to, we can add plus slider, and we'll use the get value function of the slider. All right, let's take a look at this now. So it says it's set to 50 degrees Celsius, but I think I'm going to increase the font. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it, and change slider to label. And let's set this to maybe 25, so it's more visible. That's better. Okay, so it's currently set to 50, but if we adjust this, this number doesn't change. So I'll teach you guys how to do that. And we're going to do this within our state changed method. So what we're going to type in here is label dot set text. Actually, we can just copy this and paste it. That'd probably be easier. So whenever the state changes for the slider, it's going to execute this line of code and update it. Now, the last thing that we need to do is that we need something to trigger our state changed method. So we need to add a change listener to our slider, and we can just add that here. So type in slider dot add change listener, and then within parentheses, type in the word this. So this should work now. Let's try it. Okay, so the midpoint is 50 degrees Celsius. The minimum is zero, which we have here, and the max is 100. And now if we adjusted the slider, this value is also changing whenever we adjust the knob on this track. So it has a minimum of zero and a max of 100 like we intended. And it's adjusting whenever we actually move the knob on this track then. So that's how J sliders work. It's a GUI component that lets the user enter a value by using an adjustable sliding knob on a track. So if you're looking for extra practice, your assignment is to post the code for a slider that you've made in the comments down below. But yeah, that's one of a few ways you can create a J slider in Java. Hey you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learn something new, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.